Hey guys, this is a really quick video um, of the urinary digestive and lymphatic models for Lab Practical 3. So here we got the kidney and this outer shell out here. This is called the renal cortex. Renal cortex. And then we have the renal medulla. All this in here. Renal medulla consists of renal pyramid, renal column, renal pyramid, renal column, renal pyramid, renal column, just like that. And then urine drains into, these are your minor calyces. One, two, three, four, five. These are all minor calyces. Uh, singular calyx, my, minor calyx. And here would be an example of a major calyx where two minor calyces drain into a little bit larger a tube. So here's your major calyx here. Here's one major calyx. This technically, this whole region is 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 all called the, the renal pelvis. Uh, but anyway, here's the lower part of the renal pelvis down here and off to the ureter. Also, the renal pelvis sits in the renal hilus or renal hilum. So the that's kind of how you could say it. The 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 hilus or the hilum is this indentation. And the pelvis is the tube in which the urine drains out of. So the renal, pel renal pelvis sits inside of the renal hilum or hilus. And of course, you have your renal artery, renal vein. All right, and, and uh, your adrenal gland over there. Okay, so here's the first part. So if we kind of we look here, we're going to take you through all these, the, the five little areas, five little regions of the of the nephron, whether it be the, the, the cortical nephron here or the um, juxtamedullary nephron over here. We zoom in here, so this is, here is this outer shell here, this is the first, you know, like region one, step one. This is the, uh, um, the uh, glomerular, the, the renal corpuscle, sorry. This is all this outer shell here. This is the renal corpuscle, renal corpuscle. The capillaries in here, glomerular capillaries. You can also say the glomerulus. Glomerulus, these are the, the capillaries. And this is the afferent arterial and efferent arterial. Afferent efferent. How can you tell? Because the afferent is a little bit larger in diameter. Efferent, it's a little bit uh, skinnier. This is the DCT here. See how it bisects these two arterioles? This is the, the, the DCT here. These are the macula densa cells of the DCT. And then of course you have your, this is like the beginning, be the beginning of the PCT. Uh, can you also just make sure to write everything out? So your your proximal convoluted tubule and your distal convoluted tubule. Okay, so just pay attention, make sure, because see some of these are going this direction and some of these are going, you know, this direction. So just be careful, make sure that you so you got your little tomatoes here, these guys, this is again, this is the renal corpuscle. Here is the proximal convoluted tubule. Then you have your descending limb of the nephron loop, ascending limb of the nephron loop, and then finally, or sorry, and then your distal convoluted tubule, and then finally the collecting duct. One more time, or we could even do it on a different one here. Renal corpuscle, proximal, and in, 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 in the inside, that's your glomerulus. Then you have your proximal convoluted tubule, descending limb of the nephron loop, ascending limb of the nephron loop, distal convoluted tubule, and finally your collecting duct. Some glands, here's your parotid gland, here's your submandibular gland, one, two. Again, submandibular gland, here's where the jaw would be cut out, submandibular, and then under the tongue, here's your sublingual gland. And I know we've looked at this model several times and during respiratory now and, and um, with, the, with, with the bones. Uh, so here we are again, when, again with the uh, digestive. So you got the tongue, you got the hard palate, you have the soft palate, 
right here, this orange or yellow, and then you have, oh, sorry, hard palette, white, the red is the soft palette, and then down here, this is the uvula, the uvula. Over here, we have the adenoids, or you can say that the pharyngeal tonsil. Then you have your nasopharynx, oropharynx, from tip to tip, oropharynx. And um, here's your esophagus back here. And this is the pal palatine tonsil, palatine tonsil, right here. Just another schematic, nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngopharynx. Um, here's a diagram with all three glands in the, in the jaw there, parotid, kind of goes up the ear. Then you have under the jaw, you have your submandibular, and then just under the tongue, sublingual tonsil. Okay, we got, um, here's the liver, here's the gallbladder, we got this, we have the liver makes bile, so... Uh, here is your common hepatic, common hepatic duct right here. Common hepatic duct. Bile can go up the cystic duct and into the gallbladder for storage. So you have your common hepatic duct, cystic duct, and then finally, if it drains down into the uh, duodenum, this is your common bile duct. One, two, three. Duodenum. Here's the the pancreas. On a model, here it looks like here where it's coming from the liver and going to go down. This would be going to the uh, to the duodenum. So that therefore, this is the common hepatic duct and this is the common bile duct. Here's your cystic duct. This can this can contract and and uh, and and or relax, letting letting bile up here for storage or, or for release. And then finally, and of course you have your your uh, your gallbladder here. Okay, here all this is the pancreas, so just pancreas, here's your pancreatic duct here. Pancreatic duct and the pancreas. And your esophagus comes down, 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 here's the esophagus, you can kind of see it there, but then it pokes right through the diaphragm to get to the stomach. So this hole is called your esophageal hiatus, esophageal hiatus. All right, and the stomach, let's start with the regions. Regions, you got your cardia right here, you got your fundus right here, you got the body, all the rest of this is the body, and then you got your pylorus, cardia, right under the esophagus, cardia, fundus, body, and pylorus. You have your lesser curve, your greater curve, lesser curve, greater curve. When you're hungry, when your stomach is empty, you the, these folds appear. These are called rugi. And when you're full, they stretch out and they disappear. Those are called rugi. Over here, we got the pyloric sphincter. And this is what opens up just a little bit at a time. So when this thing churns back and forth, undergoing peristalsis a little bit at a time, squirts out a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Should anyway. And so there's your pyloric sphincter. And here's the beginning of the small intestine. Here's your, your, uh, your duodenum. Um... Yeah, so here is your pyloric sphincter. So here is your cardioesophageal. There's many, many names. You can call it whatever you want, uh, as long as it's right. Here I call it the cardio, the cardioesophageal sphincter. So you got two, cardioesophageal sphincter, and you got your pyloric sphincter, right there. Here's a bunch of different names for it. Okay, moving right on. So your duodenum is the, so you got your stomach, food, food, it becomes liquid chyme, goes into your duodenum here, or you, some people can say, you know, some people say duodenum, first part of the small intestine, it's sort of like the, the, the straight pipe of the small intestine. Then kind of this area up here is your jejunum, 
Then as it kind of makes its way around, this is all the ilium. Can't really tell a difference macroscopically, but under a microscope you can tell a difference when you're looking at the walls. So du duodenum, jejunum, and finally the ilium. Make sure to spell that correctly, not like the wing of the, of the hip, ilium. Okay, and then eventually it gets to the, to the, to the cecum. Well, here is your ileocecal valve, ileocecal sphincter would be the muscle, the valve, um, and the cecum. The cecum is this little area that where food can actually go backwards, because see, food will go like this and go up this direction. Well, it also can go backwards a little bit. It can even go even further into this little pocket. Here's your appendix. So if it if food gets down there and gets stuck down there, and food isn't moving regularly, uh, you know you might have to remove that. Okay. Uh, then you have your ascending colon, your transverse colon, your descending colon to right there, your sigmoid colon. Let's see, sigmoid is not it's it's not mentioned here. The S part, sigmoid colon, the um, the rectum, and then the the hole is the anus. Um, let's see here. I wanted to say something, and then these little balls, so these little segments here, these are your hostrum right here, hostrum, hostrum, hostrum. All right, one more time. Small intestine dumps into the large intestine, but if you go backwards, you got your cecum. Appendix, if you go up, ascending, transverse, descending, sigmoid, rectum, anus. And uh, you have your colic flexure here, or your right hepatic flexure here. Uh, and you have your splenic here, or your left colic flexure here. Um, yeah, zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see you got your valve and you got the sphincter. Okay. And then uh, for the lymphatic, we have our uh, left and right subclavians. Well, the, the thoracic duct dumps into the left subclavian vein and the lymphatic duct dumps into the right subclavian vein. So they're they're right here for you, these two orange arrows, just to keep it clear. And that's and that's and that's that. They're even down here. It's even down here for you. Okay, and here is one lymph node. You got your just a few regions. Here's the medulla, here's the cortex, and you have kind of like your outer cortex here and your inner cortex here and your germinal cells. Uh, well, sorry, your, your germinal center would be these orange spots. So the germinal center is in the outer cortex. Medulla, cortex, split it up. You have your outer cortex, inner cortex, and then you have the germinal center, which is in the outer outer cortex. Here's just another one more diagram. Look at all your tonsils here. Lingual tonsil, palatine tonsil, pharyngeal tonsil. Here's your uvula right here. Pharyngeal. It's 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 hard to see like this, but they're just kind of pulling it down, but it's you can't really you can't see it that unless it's way swollen, but um it, it is kind of right there. I just from this angle, I I don't think you can ever see it like that, but but you can see your your palatine very easily. All right, and that's it. All right, thank you guys.